This video is an update on the Tesla powered TVR. My name's Tim, this is Chargeheads, let's get into it. It's starting to look a lot more complete now. Um, the last update was five months ago and uh, there's been a lot going on in terms of the interior and just all the cable work underneath, which uh, uh, we went into last time. Um, but basically what I've been doing today with Ralph is going through how the dash layout is going to be because um, I originally sent the dials over to Peterson EV and they do a lot of the uh, repurposing of the dials. Unfortunately, my budget wasn't quite uh, up to scratch when it comes to uh, that type of repurposing of dials. So um, I'll show you what we're planning to do, but let's jump in the car. I think uh, now the seats are in, it'd be rude not to, right? Look at the brown, the brown and the beige. It's looking good, I reckon. Go on, whack some comments in there. <laughs> so, uh, steering wheel's in. We've got a temporary gear shift there as well, so forwards and reverse, etc. The uh, ashtray is looking a bit rusty, and there's a random key in there. Hmm, interesting. Um, the rear battery box isn't in at the moment because uh, we've been putting this uh, very high grade, tough steel bar in to uh, for rigidity and connect to the rear battery box, and that will give it structural structural rigidity and. Uh, you know, safety from a crash uh, point of view, which is important in a TVR, let's be honest. Well, you don't buy a TVR for safety, let's be honest. So, um, so yeah, the, the dash is out at the moment, um, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Uh, all the pedals are in, the brakes have been bled. So let's shut the door. Oh. Like any TVR, it's nice and snug in here. So uh, if, if you guys can pretend that, just imagine me just driving along, uh, is it going to be quiet though? Ralph has actually done quite a few cool things to make sure it does have some noises and I can't wait to you know, get the vehicle started up and um, yeah, start hearing these noises that uh, Ralph's uh, basically put into the how the car starts up and things like that. So that's going to be exciting to do. Um, so stereo wise, we're going to have a normal single din in there and I'm going to put speakers underneath the dash a little microphone at the top there for bluetooth because i'm going to be using it as an everyday car uh, where possible so you're going to have to have these creature comforts as well as heating so the seats are mx5 repurposed as people that follow the channel will know uh, so heated that'll keep you warm and then you've got heat coming up uh, for the windscreen to demist it um, and then if it's hot i just roll down the window uh, no aircon here so um, yeah, let's get out of the car and I'll show you the dash bits. I'll show you the dash. Um, this is the fiberglass work that's been done and there's a plate behind there. Uh, the CCS port, CCS2 port's not in there at the moment. It's been taken out, uh, like I said, because the rear battery and the um, cross members are getting fitted at the moment. So that's in there and the CCS port. Oh, look, there's a Kempower movable charger there. So that CCS2 port will fit in nicely uh, for the DC charging. And another thing that's been being made is the uh, fiberglass to go over the battery box and that will be carpeted as well. But what colour carpet should I do? Whack it in the comments. What do, what do people think will go with the uh, brown and beige? Uh, black? I guess black. But yeah, interesting to see what people think about that. So part of the dash, which is kind of the centre console, is just over here on top of the uh, charge. Uh, so this is the original uh, section where the head unit used to be and the controls for the um, heating and stuff. We decided that these uh, controls are actually just a bit too old, old school, old hat, not very reliable. So we're going to uh, basically recreate this, but with updated um, controls that are more reliable. Uh, but we're still going to keep that kind of retro thing going. Um, so that's what we've been talking about today. But I'll take you over to the dash, which is even more exciting. So let's go over there now. So here we have the original dash and here were the dials. So a lot of these um, controls um, are obviously useless in terms of uh, what was indicating the en engine controls, essentially, um, and some of the warning uh, lights. So some of the warning lights we'll need to put on here but essentially what's going to happen is we have got a used 
you know, keep on with the repurposing. Uh, iPad mini, and the screen's just going to go just there. And uh, I'll put up on the screen what it's going to look like in terms of the display, but essentially you'll have the two dials and controls showing you all the readings and then we're going to have a few other readouts with regards to um, state of charge uh, battery temperature inverter temperature and some some of the other controls here like the indicators and full beam um, we're going to put them on here as well we've got a couple of cool ideas that we've been going through me and ralph uh, with regards to um, you know keeping it a bit retro uh, he's going to send me a cad drawer and if he sent it in time i'll put it up on the screen as you can tell, we really get into the nitty gritty of the build now and there's so much more going on. But let me show you underneath the bonnet uh, because it's starting to really look like, I would say engine bay, but it's not really an engine bay, is it? <laughs> Squeaky. So under here, we've got the battery box, the battery cutoff uh, from a safety point of view. Now mounted the battery. Uh, it's a slightly slimmer one and all that's going to do is start the vehicle and then the DC to DC which is uh, going to take the power from the car battery as in the big battery and feed all the 12 volt connections and we've got the wiring loom over here I think it's quite important to talk to you about actually because this is a big part of the wiring loom and what Ralph is doing is um, basically there will be modules, um, H7 I think he called it. Um, maybe I'll get him on the camera to talk a bit more about it. That might be a good idea. Let me go and find him. I found Ralph. Hi Ralph. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, can you tell us about uh, how the wiring loom is changing? Yeah, so the original TVR had a very chunky wiring loom with traditional Lucas bullet connectors in it which corrode up for a pastime they're, they're absolutely awful yeah all the switches were corroding up it was a very heavy chunky loop and it didn't work properly so we're replacing that with something a bit more modern 48 volt uh well we could do no, if you like. no. not in my true. budget mate uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's largely pointless in this particular case so we're converting all the light bulbs to led yep and the seven inch headlight units will convert to seven inch headlight led headlight units so they're all ce certified and all the rest of it and we're going to put a junction box at the front, a junction box at the back, one in the middle, so we can control all of these things lo locally. So the overall wiring loom gets a lot, lot smaller. And to control that, we're just using a little microcontroller, a little Arduino, uh, one of the industrial ones that's used for plant control and agricultural machines and all sorts of industrial stuff, which is used to being shaken around and cold temperatures and hot temperatures and moisture and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good solid unit. Uh, and that will control all of your lights, your cooling fans, the cooling pumps, um, various uh, auxiliary functions. It also controls the way that the ignition is switched on. So when you turn the ignition switch on, the first thing it does is check the uh, battery isolation monitors. So we're using Sensata uh, high voltage isolation sensors. They send out a signal to say everything's happy. It does uh, contact or weld checks. When it's happy with that, it then switches on the ignition supply to the uh, T2C um, inverter controller, the uh, Orion BMS and the uh, DC DC converter at the back. So they all then think the ignition switched on, uh, they all switch on um, knowing that everything's safe. So all those auxiliary functions are all managed by this old little controller unit. Right, okay, and whereabouts are they going to be housed in the car? So it's only a little tiny thing like that, it's yep. going underneath the dashboard. Okay, awesome. So next to the inverter controller. That's great. Thank you very much, because there's no way I would have been able to explain that, because I don't fully understand it yet. <laughs> it's, it's a lovely little thing, and it's just going to make all the wiring much neater and tidier, and allow us to do some silly functions later on, should you so wish. Uh-oh. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. No worries. So there we have it. That is the update on Wedgie. I look forward to see what the next progress is going to be and I can't wait to see this CAD drawing of the layout that we've uh, discussed today. So if I've got it, I'll whack it on the video. If not, I'll pop it in next time. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being patient with the build. Um, but we want to do it right. We want to do it safe. We want to do it to the best standard possible within the budget, of course. And, you know, something that Ralph is working on, um, other than his motor skills, check out motorskills.co.uk uh, if anybody wants to get involved in mechanics and EV 
uh, great courses that he runs, but also he's working on uh, EV conversion guidelines, best practice. So watch this space. It's all about you know making sure that you know these EV conversions in the UK are done properly, and you know we need that kind of legislation. Um, for sure uh, to make sure well I say legislation uh, those guidelines to make sure the safety is adhered to but like I said thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time